So I'm going to make the video that I really wanted to make in January, but I never got around to doing it. What I'm going to do is I want to show you every single sewing project I did in the year of 2019. The reason I wanted to do this video is because whenever you're learning a new skill, it can feel in the moment like everything is moving so slowly and it just takes you so long and you're not really making any progress. The truth is, once you look back, you realize exactly how much progress you've made. Even though I have been sewing for a very long time, I mostly just focused on costumes and sometimes special occasion dresses. I didn't really even dip my toe into sewing my own daily wear clothing until the end of 2018 when I did the capsule wardrobe project. And it is very different. Clothing that you make for daily wear, it has to hold up. So all of a sudden quality is much more important. And if you're going to bother to make your clothes that you're going to wear every day, you want them to look nice. You want them to fit right. So I wanted to just show you a year's worth of progress, basically, because whether you are trying to learn how to sew yourself whether you are learning art, whether you are writing or doing world building, in the moment it can feel very discouraging, like you're not getting anywhere. And I just want you to take a step back and look at the progress you have made, look at how far you've come, and use that to project how far that you can continue to go. Now these 18th century stockings were technically my first history bounding project, which just goes to prove that this was on a lot of people's minds before it was officially a thing. My goal was to create a pair of stockings that I could use to replace pantyhose and tights because I hate pantyhose and tights. They rip and get runs. You have to keep going out and buying new ones. They're uncomfortable and they're not even that warm. So the whole point of history bounding, in my mind, before it was an official thing, was what could I glean from historical sewing methods and incorporate into modern clothing to make them more practical than what we actually have available. So for these 18th century stockings, I started with a pattern that I believe came from the Dreamstress blog. She has a free printout and I will link it below. It was made for like a thin silk knit and I wanted to use for extra warmth a heavy plush velour lined knit. So I had to alter the sizing of the pattern pattern quite substantially, make it way bigger. I'm gonna say it was 85% successful. I made the stockings come all the way to the top of my thighs and I sewed a silicone elastic around the cuff of each leg. That actually works perfectly. They stay up all day long. I don't have to adjust them. They're fine. The warmth is perfect. The only thing that's not quite perfect about them is that the pattern was still just slightly too small. They're perfectly comfortable to wear for a while, but if I try to wear them all day, by early evening, I'm ready to take them off. Anyways, that is the modernized 18th century stockings. So these three pieces are a bit of a mixed bag. They didn't exactly work out the way I intended them to, but they have still worked out in a different way. Basically, the goal was to create winter layering pieces that I could wear underneath other clothing, similar to men's long johns. So these three pieces were made out of a black cotton waffle knit, and then the edging was all done with a black rib knit. The shirt actually works out really well as a nightshirt, it's a little bit too bulky to wear underneath most of my clothing for layering. Now the shorts I actually do wear pretty often and I wear them with the history bounding stockings. The leggings I made to wear underneath other types of pants. And I think the reason I haven't really done that is because right now most of my pants are still my old blue jeans and like tight fitting pants and there really isn't enough room for them inside those. However, as my style shifts more historical and vintage inspired and I'm drawn more towards things like trousers and more loose fitting types of pants, it is very possible that I will in the future be able to use them for the original intended purpose. Okay, so next I made a series of three basic knit shirts. I wanted to see if I could improve the basic t-shirt. The first one I made was this reddish shirt. It's definitely too wide in the shoulders and the sleeves kind of droop off. I tried out a few different yoke type things on the inside because I wanted to see if I could come up with a more invisible neckline and those didn't really work that well. I did make a detachable collar to go with these shirts, but I didn't actually end up wearing it that much. The second one I made was this navy blue bird print shirt. The shoulders are still a little bit wide on that, but I tried a different closure method on that. I tried to use an invisible zipper inside the shoulder seam. I will not be doing that again. I don't think that was really worth the effort. Now this third shirt is this black one, and this one I finally did get the shoulder width right, and I used a different method to try and stabilize it better. Inside this yoke lining the neckline, I actually used iron-on knit interfacing, which is supposed to stretch a little bit. I also used strips of that interfacing inside the hems, and then I hand-stitched the hems instead of machine-stitching them. 
and they have actually held up pretty well. Overall, this shirt is by far the best and I really do like it. All three of them I have worn quite a lot over the course of the year. They're fine, but all three of them are pilling pretty badly, especially that navy print. Like, I can't believe how quickly that one faded and just started to look like garbage. It's like, it's a little disappointing, Joanne's. So in hindsight, as I progress forward, I really don't think I'll be making many shirts like this again. And the reason is because even if I get the pattern perfect, the materials themselves do not hold up. Over the course of the year, my style and my preferences have evolved very quickly more in the vintage direction and I would rather be investing my time into making nice blouses and historical shirt waists. This skirt is the first vintage inspired item that I made in 2019. This gray skirt was actually meant to be kind of a revised version of the gray skirt that I made in my capsule wardrobe, just with a few revisions and especially in the waistband, kind of making it more towards the vintage style look. When I finished it, there were some nitpicks and I didn't really like it that much, but over time as I have worn it, I've kind of forgiven those nitpicks and I really do like it now and I wear it very regularly. I made it from an actual vintage wool that I got on Etsy. Some people use Etsy as a garage sale and I love it. It is only one layer, there is no lining, and I did that because I I feel like such a lovely wool deserves a silk lining and I started doing math and realizing how much more expensive all of my sewing was going to become if I started trying to line everything in silk. So I realized I could just make silk slips and petticoats and not have to line every single skirt. I would also like to note that at this point in time I was also working on a pair of 1940s-ish style trousers that I was making out of the same length of fabric as the skirt and I did not finish those and they became a UFO in my closet for a very long time. The next thing I made was the aforementioned silk slip. I made it from Habitoy Silk. It was based more off of vintage slips, but it looks more of like lingerie kind of a slip. And that's because of the black lace. The black lace is really the only nitpick I have with it. The problem is that I bought the silk online and it was supposed to be gray to match the skirt, but it turned out this kind of weird taupe color. I could find zero lace to match it. Absolutely nothing in existence. The problem with the black is that it shows through light colored tops and most of the blouses and tops I have are light colored. So I have not been able to use it and wear it as much as I wish I could have. The fit of it is great and I really, really love it. I'm probably going to make another one just like it in the future. I just will use a different color combination. <laughs> Next up is this dress, which is actually the first thing that I made all year that I actually made a video on, even though I took footage of literally everything up to that point. This was a vintage inspired modernized dress. I actually have not worn it that much. There is one major problem with the fit and that is the shoulders and the arms. I can't like hardly move my arms. It's just way too far in and I don't really know how that happened. I very specifically was paying attention to that area and it still ended up really off. The other thing is this was one of the last pieces of daily wear clothing that I made last year that I did not use natural fibers for. The fabric is just an acrylic from Joann's and the lining is their standard generic polyester lining fabric. I kind of hate it. <laughs> I mean it started pilling practically before I finished making it. Compare that to the gray skirt which I've been wearing all year and it hasn't pilled at all and I've also realized that I really hate polyester lining especially like if you're going to be sweating it just feels gross I hate it. I guess I haven't worn it since Christmas the pattern itself I might revisit at some point. I kind of like to try it again with just a fresh attempt and a few more revisions and then a better quality fabric Early in the summer, I made this blouse based off of a vintage-ish, based off of a re- based off of this pattern, view C. The only alterations I really did to it were I added these pin tucks and then I did my own embroidery pattern down the center of the pin tucks by hand. It was really simple, it's just a chain stitch and then I added little leaves to make it kind of a vine. And then I did more of the embroidery along the collar and then I couldn't find a narrow lace to go around the collar and the cuffs of the sleeves like I wanted. So what I ended up doing was taking the same embroidery floss and doing a very tiny blanket stitch through the edge of the collar 
and then crocheting through the blanket shift to make kind of a roughly little lace edge. And I use Mother of Pearl shell buttons and it's made from a very, very lightweight cotton batiste. I really love this shirt. When I first finished it, I wasn't sure about it, mostly because I was not expecting the collar to be this big. I have not worn it very much on its own. I have usually worn it underneath other shirts and then used the collar as a statement piece. That'll probably change this coming year because I just have more things to wear it with. Next up, about the middle of summer, I made three skirts, all at the same time. The teal and the yellow skirt were made from a linen cotton blend, and the pink skirt was made from 100% linen. They're very simple, there's not a lot special about them, but as per my build yourself sewn wardrobe mandate, if I need a piece of clothing, I should make it instead of buying it. And in the middle of the summer, I needed some skirts, so I made some skirts. The teal one I have definitely worn the most. I found it to be fairly versatile to replace denim. The yellow I have not worn as much. I really really like the skirt, but I don't personally like yellow and white paired together, so I don't have enough pieces to make that skirt super versatile at this time. The pink skirt I have not worn that often, and that is because pink's not really my color, at least not that pastel shade of pink. And I think now that I have included it in this video and I'm kind of done with it, I think I'm going to give it to my sister because that shade of pastel pink is her color, and she's a little bit mildly kind of obsessed with teacups. It's good. I feel like I was kind of making it with her in mind even if I wasn't specifically making it for her at the time. After finishing the three linen skirts, I made this thing to go with it. I'm not sure exactly what to call it because I was trying to design something that would combine the functions of a modern tank top, a linen shift, and a petticoat all in one. So something that would line the skirt, something that would look like a tank top, but also something that I could wear just by itself if I was home alone and it was a terrible, dreadfully hot day. It's made from that same linen cotton blend. It's just a little bit bulky for the intended purposes. I think that it would have been better if I had used either a super lightweight shift linen or a cotton batiste or a cotton lawn, something like that. So this is another one that I may or may not revisit this summer. Alright, next up are the two motorcycling jumpsuits, which I also made a video about. The scallops do not hold up very well, which, you know, I probably should have known that, but any thought in my mind I just kind of brushed away because I haven't made my own daily wear clothing before and when you have to wash it, it just, certain things are not very practical. And also, this one especially, I did not tack down the scallops and they've kind of become permanently folded up like this. So I don't love that. I designed it for very specific purposes, which if you watched the video, you know that. I don't really feel like I need to make one like this again. It's modern style and I'm really enjoying my departure from modern style. I'm going to keep both of them in my wardrobe, but I don't really feel like this is a project that I want to improve upon later. I feel like it's good enough and anything else, I want to design something different. Later in the summer, I made my first ever historical practice completely hand-sewn item, which was this 18th century shift. It was the beginning of my 18th century wardrobe, of which I now have two pieces, so I didn't actually get that far. Fun fact, I've taken footage of every single project you've seen here today, and only made videos about like half of them. So this one, I still do have the footage. I'm planning on making a video at some point. I haven't gotten around to it because there are already a bajillion how to make a shift videos and I haven't figured out what angle I have of new information to bring to the topic. So yes, 18th century shift, first historical costuming piece of the year. Next, I made this slightly modernized 18th century bodice. I made it out of scrap fabric from the plaid 50s dress project, and it's all right. I made this about the same time that I made that video about Claire's bodices in Outlander, and this was a test of a prototype of a pattern that I made for her bodices, according to the data that I was researching in that video. I think one of the goals I was trying to achieve with this pattern was to see if I could make something 18th century that still did incorporate the princess seams so that I could use my regular bra with a bodice like this. I don't really think I want to go in that direction anymore just because 
it's more comfortable to go with the other silhouette. When you create the space for the bust, it kind of clamps down and tightens, and that to me is not as comfortable as the actual traditional method. I don't know, that's another discussion for a longer video. <laughs> So next I made a whole set of clothing, and this is gonna make absolutely no sense to you unless you've also been watching my world building videos. I don't really have anything to say about like the fit and quality because it's not daily wear, it's purely costuming, but it was a lot of fun and I finished it right towards the end of fall and we had to hurry up and take pictures and half of my friends were out of town. So weather gets a little bit warmer, we kinda wanna do a round two. So yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about this as far as my clothing video, but also I need like the tiniest shred of excuse to dress up in something weird, so here we are. And then as the weather started to cool and I was in need of some warmer clothing, I finally dug out my gray wool trousers UFO and decided to finish them up. Part of the reason I wasn't in a bigger hurry to finish them is because I've never worn trousers before and I didn't think they would be my style. And they're actually really comfortable and they were warm and I have been wearing them all winter. I really do like them. As far as future planning, I want to go more in the direction of trousers and less in the direction of blue jeans. Why would I spend the time making blue jeans? Jeans when these were so much nicer and they, they turned out so clean and they're lined in silk and they're comfortable. And then I did make one more thing in 2018. The whole last month and a half of the year was focused solely on the 18th century stays, which I have a whole video about and honestly I've been trying on clothes all day and I think I'm done. If you want to know more about the details and the process and the end results, you can go check out that video. I'm not going to go into it much here because I feel like I've already said everything there is to say about them and they're new enough and they're costume enough pieces that I don't really have any update on how they have worn and been durable as of yet. So there you have it, I did 15 total projects, but as you can see, that ended up being a lot more than 15 individual pieces. When you're in the moment and you're struggling with a project, it does feel like things are going slowly. But when you look back at the progress you've made over a span of time, all of a sudden you really realize, wow, I have made a lot. I mean, look at that pile of clothes on my couch. <laughs> So I hope this was fun for you. I'm going to get on to editing it because I have two weeks and I want to use them so wisely. So I'll see you next time.